What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to get Botocera up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4. It was recently released over on their website as a beta, but this tutorial will still apply when it's the official release. This is publicly available. A lot of the stuff is working really great that I've tested. Some of the higher end stuff still needs some work because of the GPU driver on the Raspberry Pi 4. But overall, it's a great option if you've been waiting for a retro operating system for your Pi 4. This video is a basic setup guide. I'm going to show you how to install Botocera, get your controller set up. We're also going to go over adding games over network, installing new themes inside of Botocera, and scraping our box art so we can get box art and videos for each of our game. But before we get started, there are a few things that you're going to need. Obviously, the first thing being a Raspberry Pi 4. This will work on a 1 gigabyte model, 2 or a 4 gigabyte model. I would recommend at least the 2, but 1 will get you by. It shouldn't be much different than the 2 or the 4 with emulation. You're also going to need a USB Type-C power supply and a micro HDMI cable for the Pi 4. You can buy kits. I'll leave links in the description. The next thing you're going to need is a micro SD card. I'm using a cheap 32 gigabyte silicon power. I personally like these cards, but you can use up to a 512 gigabyte card if you want. You'll also need some type of controller. If you're just starting out with the Raspberry Pi and Botocera, I would recommend something like a wired controller. But you could also pick up something like the FlyDigi Apex, which comes with a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, so you don't have to do any Bluetooth setup. But Bluetooth is working with Botocera and the Pi 4, so you can connect your PS4 controller. The setup that I'm going with is a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte model, with an ice tower cooler and the official Raspberry Pi USB Type-C power supply. And the final thing we'll need is another PC so we can flash this SD card and transfer our ROMs over. Now in this video, I'm going to be using a Windows 10 PC because a lot of people use Windows, but this will also work with Mac or Linux. Some of the steps may be a little different in transferring your games over, but there's lots of tutorials online. All right, so let's go ahead and get Botocera installed on our SD card so we can run it on our Raspberry Pi 4. Now on my desktop, I have some games. I can't tell you where to get these. This is going to come after we install the operating system to the SD card, but we will need to add some games to Botto Sarah. You can do a quick Google search and find everything you need. I have some Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, PlayStation 1, and SNES. All of these are going to remain zipped, except for my PlayStation 1 games. Now, Botto Sarah has a full wiki. It'll explain everything you need about BIOSes and things like that, so I recommend reading through that. For PlayStation 1, we will need a BIOS. So I'm going to be using the PlayStation 1 BIOS. It's named SCP-H1001.bin. This is going to go in our BIOS folder after we install Botocera. So I have my games. I have my BIOS. Now it's time to install Botocera to an SD card. And to do that, we're going to obviously need to download the Botocera image and an application to flash it to our SD card. We're going to be using Etcher. So first, let's head over to botocera.org forward slash download. Link for this is in the description. We're going to find the Raspberry Pi 4 image. Now, as making this video, it's in beta. This is going to come out of beta later on, but you can still use this tutorial. We're going to download it. It's 324 megabytes. We're also going to need to download Etcher. This works for Mac, Windows, or Linux. And we're going to be using the Windows version. And I download the portable version. So I'm going to give these a second to download, and I'm going to place them on my desktop for easy access. So my image and etcher are finished downloading. I'm going to just drag them over here. And now it's time to flash the SD card. We're going to go ahead and launch etcher. I've already placed my SD card in my PC using a simple USB micro SD card reader. So now that we have etcher opened up, we're going to select image. We're going to navigate to where we downloaded the image, the Botocera image. Mine's on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and select that. We'll make sure we have the correct SD card chosen. And choose Flash. Etcher is now going to flash Botocera to the SD card so we can run it successfully on our Raspberry Pi 4. Just give this some time to finish up. Alright, so Etcher is now finished flashing that SD card. We're going to go ahead and close this down. We now need to move over to our Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to insert the SD card, plug in our HDMI, controller, and power. Alright, so here we are at the Raspberry Pi. The controller I'm using actually comes with a little 2.4 GHz dongle. This is just like plugging it in through USB, except this is a wireless version. If you're using an Xbox One or an Xbox 360 controller that's wired, just go ahead and plug it into one of the free USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. 
So I've just plugged in the power. We got that new micro SD card inserted into the Pi 4. We're going to wait for Bato Serra to boot up. On the very first boot, you're going to see a section that looks like this. Just let this finish up. It's going to expand the file system of that SD card so we can use the full capacity. Once this is done, it'll boot us into the Bato Serra operating system. And we're now here. There are some freeware games installed, but first thing we need to do is set up our controller. If you're using a controller that comes with a dongle or a USB controller, just press A on the controller. It'll bring up the configuration menu. From here, it's going to walk you through how to set this up. First, we have our D-pad, up, down, left, right. Then we have Start Select, A, B, X, Y, Analog Stick, Triggers, and at the very end, it's going to ask us for a hotkey. I always use my Select button. Just press Select here, and when we're finished, we'll press whatever we mapped as A. And now we have our controller set up. If you want to pair a Bluetooth controller, you can do that very easily. Just plug a keyboard into the Pi and press the space button or start on another controller. Go to controller settings and pair a Bluetooth controller. From here, you're going to put your controller in pairing mode. It really depends on what controller you're using. It'll detect the controller. You can connect it and then map it just like we did, but you'll be doing it over Bluetooth. If you're just starting out, I recommend a wired controller just to get up and running. Now it's time to add some games and we're going to be doing this over network. So what we need to do is connect our Wi-Fi on our Raspberry Pi or plug in your Ethernet. If you're on a controller, press start. If you're using a keyboard, press the space bar. And from the main menu, we're going to go to network settings. As you can see, it's not connected now. So we're going to scroll down to enable Wi-Fi if you're using Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi SSID, it's going to scan for your network. You'll find your network. You can refresh from here. You're going to select the network you want to connect to. And then you'll put in your password here under Wi-Fi key. Once that's finished, you'll be connected online over Wi-Fi. And this is how we're going to transfer our games from our PC over to the Raspberry Pi. If you're using Ethernet, just plug in the cable and you'll be good to go. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I've plugged in my Ethernet, just makes it easier for me. I'm going to head back to my network settings. And from here, I'm going to remember my IP address. We also have a host name that we can use. But I always find that it's easier to connect to the Pi using my IP address for some reason. You might have better luck using the host name. But I'm going to be connecting using my IP address. And remember, the PC that we have our game stored on needs to be on the same network as our Raspberry Pi. If you want to transfer games using USB, I'll leave a link to the Botocera wiki. There's tons of information over there. But in this video, we're going to be doing it using our IP address. So now I'm going to move back over to my PC. I'm going to leave this just like it is with everything connected. Now it's time to get our games transferred over. There are several ways to do this with Botocera, but I'm showing you how to do it over network. We're going to open up a file explorer and keep in mind you need to be on the same network as your Raspberry Pi. We just got our IP address from our Raspberry Pi running Bato Serra. We're going to go up to the very top and from here we're going to type in backslash backslash and our IP address. Mine was 192-168-1-98. I'm going to press enter and as long as we're on the same network we'll see a folder called share. We are now connected to our Raspberry Pi over network. Inside of here, we have our ROMs folder and our BIOSes. I'm going to go with my BIOS folder first because I want to put my PlayStation 1 BIOS in here. It's on my desktop. I'm just going to drag it right over here. It's now on my Raspberry Pi's SD card. Now it's time to work with our games. We'll go into our ROMs folder. And as you can see here, we have a folder for each system we can run on the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to open up my games folder. This contains my ROMs. GB is Game Boy. I'll find Game Boy on my Raspberry Pi, and I'm just going to transfer these over. We'll back up. Game Boy Advance. I'll find GBA over here. This is my Raspberry Pi. This is my PC. We'll get our Game Boy Advance games over there. And so on and so on. So if we want to do Mega Drive, we'll find Mega Drive. and it transferred my Mega Drive games. SNES. And finally, PlayStation 1, which is PSX. And this game's much larger than everything else that I transferred, so it will take a little bit of time. 
So we now have our games and our BIOS transferred over to a Raspberry Pi. Let's move back over there now. We're going to refresh the game list, and all those games we just transferred will show up on our Raspberry Pi running Botocera. So I'm still at the same screen we left off on. I'm going to back up in my main menu, and I'm going to find Game Settings. We're going to select this menu option, and at the very bottom, we'll see Update Games List. Press A on your controller, and it's going to update the game. So now we have all of those games that we just transferred from our PC on our Raspberry Pi and ready to play. You can actually start from here, but there's a few other things I'd like to show you. Like adding artwork for each game, and we can do that all on the Raspberry Pi running Botocera, and downloading new themes. So I'm going to connect this to my game capture to make it a little easier to look at, but remember we still need to be online with either Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Okay, so now we have our games added, but they're looking kind of plain. There may be a few in here that do have box art. These are the freeware games that came preloaded with Botocera, but as you can see, most of my stuff is just really plain Jane. We can easily change this by pressing start on your controller. You need to be online for this to work, so make sure you're still online. Go to scrape. We're going to scrape from screen scraper. You can change this up, you can experiment with it, but I'm going to go with screenshot for image source. I want a 3D box, logo source wheel, scrape ratings, make sure this is on. You can also scrape videos. Now we're going to go down to scrape now, and as you can see, we have all of our 11 systems that we have games installed on checked here. You can uncheck the ones you don't want to scrape, but I'm going to go ahead and choose start. And up in the top right hand corner, you can see it's scraping for it. So this might take some time depending on how many games you have. We'll let this finish up. I'm going to fast forward this. Then we'll get into changing the theme of Botocera. All right, so we're finished scraping our images. They're not showing up yet, but all we need to do is refresh our games list. So we'll go to game settings at the bottom, update games list. And now you can see we have artwork and we also have videos. So yeah, it just makes it look a lot nicer here. So now I know a lot of people are going to want to change the look of Botocera, and that's also very easy. You got to be online, press start. We'll scroll all the way down to updates and downloads. From here, we have a themes menu. And we have a few to choose from. There's not as many as RetroPie, let's say, but there are some great ones. So one of my favorites is Next Level V4. I'm just going to press A. It's going to download it for me. I'll go back in here and download another one real quick. We'll just go with, we'll do simple. And Zoid, I believe, is another great one. Let those finish up. In the top right hand corner, you can see the status of them downloading. And we have all three installed. So in order to change it, press start, UI settings. The very top, we have theme set. So now I'm gonna go with that ES theme next level V4. B. It's going to apply the theme for us, and we now have a new theme. Some people don't like the scrolling effect here, so we can change that also. Start, UI settings, transition style, fade, slide is what we're set at now, or we can go to instant, and we'll just do instant for this one. That way there's not a lot of movement going on. I'll try out one more, UI settings, change the theme here to Zoid back up and we now applied a new theme and if they don't look right when you're scrolling you can always change that uh, transition effect from right here you can go to auto if you like this will give us that slide effect but yeah I mean that's pretty much it you are now up and running with Botocera on your Raspberry Pi 4 we'll just go into Sonic the Hedgehog 2 One of my favorite parts about Botocera are the automatic bezels here. We also have the bezel project built in if you want specific bezels for each game. But I personally really like the way these turn out. So we're now playing Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on a Raspberry Pi 4 using Botocera. Start and select will bring you right back into the emulation station menu. And you can start playing whatever you want. 
But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you have Potosera up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4. Keep in mind, as of making this video, it's still in beta, but that will change down the road. Everything's just going to start working a lot better, but all the lower end stuff that I've tested so far works amazingly, even PlayStation 1. Now, before I get out of here, I did want to show you one of the best themes that I've ever seen for Emulation Station. I've downloaded it through the themes menu here. It's known as Epic Noir. Some people might not be into it, but I personally really love this new theme here. We do have the artwork and videos, all of that supported in here. And I just think it looks really good. I had to show this off before I got out of here. You can download it through the themes menu on Botocera. It just looks amazing in my opinion. Now, like I mentioned, Botocera does have a full forum. They also have a full wiki page. So if you need some help, you can check out their wiki page. If you're really stuck, you can join the forum and ask a question there. But that's it for this one. I really appreciate you watching. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.